John Cock, A Retrospective by Friends, is an interactive video disc presentation produced by the Interactive Media Project at IBM Research in Hawthorne, New York. As you can see, the sides of the screen are filled with uh, labels, and along the bottom there's some more labels, and there's kind of a binding. When I push the Help label on the bottom of the screen, I get a new page that explains to me what each of those labels might mean, and I also notice it says, touch the binding any time to close the book. But before I try that, I'm going to see what that label called technology right in the middle of the screen might mean. And so I see there, aha, this is the hardware and software configuration that the presentation is running on. It's called an interactive multimedia scrapbook, and I see how the uh, tabs and the binding and so on uh, promote that idea of a scrapbook. I also noticed that the experimental software was written by the Interactive Media Project. Okay. So now, by pressing the binding, I'll My let name it is Fran Allen. run in the attract mode. John Cock has had a profound impact on computers, on the computer industry, on IBM, and on the people who have worked with him. One of the purposes of this project is to capture the spirit and the ideas of this very complex man. Those of us who've had the good fortune to work with him often think that when we first have heard an idea from him that it's a brand new idea. One of the things you will learn is that these ideas have a long history, spanning his entire career very often and are still and very while it's exciting in track today. Mode, the animation comes up that automatically presses the tabs for me. Now you'll notice that it's going to press diverse, and that same label will appear on the bottom of the screen. From what I understand, a lot of John's contributions in circuit simulation and parallel machines are having a great impact in IBM and I guess indirectly in, in many other places. And um, I think there is hardly anything that I know of in the whole computing uh, spectrum at Yorktown, at least as it was until 1980 when I left, that. Um, John didn't influence in a positive way, whether it was a project in signature verification or speech recognition or signal processing architectures or um, any of the other activities that related to either system architecture, um, machine design, or uh, software systems. So John's influence in IBM is, uh, I, I find it hard to believe that there's ever been a person in the company that influenced so many people in so many different areas. Uh, so I, I would um, hope that uh, IBM will build a big statue to John someday because I think he's been one of the most important people, certainly, of the last 25 years uh, in the company. And I think this kiosk, the interactive media um, presentation, really is kind of like a I'm Joel Burnham. statue to John Cock. You ought to watch the video. He's, um, he's one of a kind. Well, I'm going to get out of attract mode and press some buttons by myself now. Now I see the screen with 15 different individuals on it, and it offers me the opportunity to touch anybody. There's John Cock in the corner, but I'll touch Ed Sussenguff and see what he has to say about John Cock. I see um, I can choose any of these five aspects of John Cock, so I'll take his work and see the tab on the bottom still reminds Working me. Working with John is a unique kind of thing. The, the typical experience, if I could think of a day, is that you're sitting at your desk or wherever it is doing the thing you're supposed to do, and a couple of times a day or every third day, John walks into your office and starts writing on the blackboard. Usually you have some idea what it is. Most of the time you don't have any idea what he's talking about. And sooner or later, you realize that he is doing something that fits into what you're doing and it's so far ahead of what you're doing and you're able to catch up to him. Uh, it's not like working with other people. Hi, I'm Ed Sassengath. Hi, Ed. Let's see what people say under the category what. Here's John Cock. And I see he's been contributing for 35 years to IBM. Uh, some of these are projects I don't know very much about, but compiler optimization is something we could learn about, I hope. John, because of his 
And you notice Fred Brooks' name shows Deep just briefly. understanding and contributions to optimizing compilers said the, the appearance of the optimizing compiler makes it possible for us to go essentially backward in computer design, back to the days of the most primitive computers with the RISC concept. Here's a pause that shows how the authoring system edits the elements of the we video had, disc. I uh, had a contract uh, with uh, Harando Kuki, Kuki, I think, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing it, Kuki at the University of Chicago. And he and his students were working on some of the numerical uh, library routines. And one particular routine they were pr very proud of that came, some of the students came and, and said, this can be done in 43 cycles on the um, ACS. So we coded it up in, this was hand coded, we coded it in for, up in Fortran and ran it through our experimental compiler and it did it in 38. The technical content of the video was designed for the audience of computer scientists attending John Cox's 35th anniversary event. I press when. And here are, on any one of the calendars, we can press it and see some of the honors that John Cox has accrued in his 35 years of service to IBM, but also some of the other calendars would reveal video. Rather than take that time right now, let's go to where. We can see some of the famous IBM locations, including Poughkeepsie. Uh, Ralph Palmer, who was then head of the development laboratory, uh, called about 20 of us and said we weren't going on vacation that year that instead of having the plant had a vacation, a regular vacation period that we all went, instead of taking vacation at that time, we were all going to get together and uh, uh, decide what we were going to do about the next generation of computers from the hardware standpoint. I'm going to interrupt this and show you the screen that tells how John Cock does what he does, a real style of operating. These badges look a little bit different from the previous graphics that you've been seeing. And although a lot of people are curious about that dog and bone, I'm going to uh, touch the top hat. And notice the cursor John changing to the thumbs up. He's a very nice person. He's a very, he's a gentleman. He's incredibly, uh, he's kind-hearted and upright and honest. And uh, not everybody is. We find a lot of users want to spend time on this screen, but I'll skip Y and go right to the quiz. You saw Y during the attract sequence. I'm going to choose a question at random, and in fact, this question I'll give you the right answer to. So, John Cock has been described as the smartest man in the United States. We get confirmation of the correct answer. Definitely, yes. And then, following that, the video disc shows us where, I in met fact, John he's been characterized that way. 1974, when I first came to interview at IBM. It was pretty interesting. Uh, Joel Birnbaum was uh, my host. He was, at the time, a senior manager in the department. And uh, he was explaining to me the people on the agenda. And he said, oh, John Cock, this is the smartest man in the United States. When you get the right answer, it advances to the next question. But at any time, you can choose any question. Let's try a wrong answer. Who's this person? My name is Ian Gunn. And the possible choices... No, I'm afraid you've got me confused with Lou Branscombe. Were Ian Gunn, Lou Branscombe, and Fred Brooks. So you get another chance. Let's pick the right answer this time, since Ian told us. Sure, that's right. And you get a confirmation. I'm Louis Branscombe. And again, it advances to the next question. Let me bump ahead and, and look at number 35, the last quiz question. And it asks, why are there exactly 35 interesting questions in this quiz? So we'll choose B. We got tired of writing questions after the 35th. Better try that again. Oh, Fred, thanks for that feedback. How about there are only 34 interesting questions? This one's silly. I mean, the thing is get on with it. And I'm sure you'll agree with him. We're celebrating John Cox's 35th anniversary of joining Fine. the IBM company. I met John in 1956, the week we both joined the IBM company. And now I'll let John Cock have the final word, and you can learn a little bit more about what he thinks his style of operating is.
I have a lot of curiosity and enthusiasm about things, and if, uh, if uh, something seems a lot better, I would like to have it done that way, right? And uh, so, I, I mean, I try to do well. <laughs>